Hello and welcome to Big Dumb Movie, where we discuss a different Big Dumb Movie every episode. I'm your host, Corey the Cool Cat, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Alan the Goblin Garcia. <laughs> Hello. And Tasty Steve. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think of the nicknames I just made up? I think that's pretty sweet. They're, yeah, they're not going right. to stick. No. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to be known as Tasty Steve like in a prison environment. <laughs> you, know, just, you plan on going to prison, Steve? Anything's possible. It's all this torrenting of movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, if that's what I go down for. <laughs> They're going to make an example out of you. Right. Uh. So uh, this time around, we watched the movie Showgirls, which was released in 1995, directed by Paul Verhoeven. Have you ever heard of that director, Alan? I have. Just because of RoboCop. (laughs) Nice. I know he's done some other stuff, and he's a pretty uh, well-accomplished director. Absolutely. Yeah, but I know RoboCop and this god-awful movie. Steve, what is Paul Verhoeven known for outside of RoboCop? Give us a list. Uh, Starship Troopers, Basic Instinct. Mm. Um, Basic Instinct, I think, is one of the best neo-noir films on Earth. I mean that sincerely. That's an, that's an amazingly good movie. There's some goofy moments, but it's a great movie. Um, make your case, sir. Make my case. <laughs> um, it is. It's. It's a perfect. It's a perfect neo noir. There's. There's the blonde bombshell. There's the gritty detective. It takes place in rainy San Francisco. Like all of the. I mean, in some ways, it certainly is kind of a cliche detective movie. But it's just everything about the attitude. The, the the set design, the placement of it, the tone, the pacing is just, it's exactly what a neo-noir film is supposed to be. I think it's like a textbook perfect one. Wow. And, I haven't uh, seen that movie in so long. You're kind of making me want to see it again. I sincerely recommend it, like everyone watch it. If if you really just, just let yourself go into it without preconception, I would bet you come out the other end liking it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Basic instinct. Maybe we'll have to put it on the list. Right. Does it qualify for a podcast? We could do it for a podcast. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to spend most of it talking about how much I like it, but we could do it. <laughs> nice. We'll have another dust till dawn. So Showgirls is um, a film that I had never seen as a kid for obvious reasons. I think it's NC-17. Yes. Or uh, th- Is that the same thing as Rated X? Basically, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I know it's um, one of the only NC-17 films that get a wide release. I think it is pretty much the only one yeah and uh from what i heard it's actually the highest grossing nc-17 film of all time yeah so that's pretty interesting well i mean how many other nc-17 movies are there that seems like a pretty you know i couldn't name that's one that's what i mean um, it seems like you win by default <laughs> yeah you know well in films that don't go through the mpaa's rating process will often automatically get nc-17 uh when they when they go to theaters in fact, I re- specifically remember my mother trying to take me, I can't remember what movie it was, but she was trying to take me to a theater with her to see a movie that uh, Henry, Henry Thomas, whatever his name is, the, he was the kid in E.T. He was in it, and it was, an, it was a technically unrated film, but the theaters were treating it, because the MPA hadn't rated it, they were treating it as an NC-17, and I was like 15, she couldn't take me in. Oh. Yeah, it's crazy. Robbed. Did you ever get to see it? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, hey, I don't even it. remember what movie it was. Wait a minute, not to go off track here, but who the hell is the MPAA? Like, they can just make these rules? The what motion the theaters picture. are like, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they they actually are, they're the ones that created and, and, like, operate the rating system and, like, everything organizational about, like, film distribution and, and theatrical exhibition is, is basically in, done in accordance with their rules. But is there, like, a legal precedence for that? What if they were just like, we don't want to do that or care? Well, I mean, theaters <laughs> have the option of, I, I guess they might have the option of circumventing that somehow, but I don't know. I'm not sure. But I think that in order to be able to run pretty much any film, they have to maintain an agreement with the MPAA that says they'll maintain to that standard. So. It just seems weird there can be an organization that can just slap these rules on you. Right. Yeah, and it seems pretty arbitrary. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, it is. Steve told me once I think it is. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we may have even talked about this for one of the last couple of podcasts. Yeah, for a I think minute. we did on the last one. Right? Yeah. Where, yeah, it's just it's a different group of people every time, and there's no consistent standard. There's a whole documentary about how this works, so people can go see it. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's really it's stupid. The you theaters get... have to do this. Right, <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyway, Showgirls, I, <laughs> I didn't see as a kid, but uh, I got to experience in high school. Um, I, at my house, we had, like, the movie channels, like, you know, 
HBO and Showtime, and it was playing on one of those. And uh, I was about 15 or 16 when I watched it for the first time, and I did not enjoy it at all. <laughs> I, I At the time, I didn't really have an appreciation for movies that are so bad they're good. And I, I th- put it on, honestly, for the nudity. I was like, there's going to be nudity in this. Mm-hmm. I put it on, and there was, but... Uh, None of it was sexy, unfortunately. <laughs> this is the least sexy movie with the most nudity. It has like a really bad sexy to nudity ratio, I think. You start to get bored of the nudity. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, Alan, I, I'm sure you have absolutely no experience with this movie, so I'm going to ask you a different question. Since this movie features a lot of strip clubs, do you have any good strip club stories? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have a really funny one off the top of my head. Nice. <laughs> um, this was like 10 years ago. And I was at the Valley Ball with this guy, Cown. This uh, chick, Sammy, and her friend, I think it was Jessica. I don't know what we were doing. But we're like, oh, let's all go to a strip club. So it's like, oh, okay. So we all go. Um, and we're in the strip club. Everything's going on. And then this, like, really overweight, like, slobby-looking, like, typical, like, shitty strip club patron. Just imagine, like, the cliche, like, guy who, like, visits a strip club regularly. You know? He comes, not us, though. No, not, not us. us. No, no. You <laughs> just whoever you can imagine. And he comes up to the Sammy's friend, the other chick we were with. And, like, he's, like, half drunk, and he's, like, he's, like, how much? Like, he kind of, like, slurs it. And she's, like, no, no, I'm not a stripper. And then he's like, oh, okay. And he kind of just walks away. And when he walks away, she just starts like crying her eyes out because the guy thought she was a stripper. Oh my God. And she's like, he thought I was a stripper. And she's like crying her eyes out. And I mean, it was kind of funny at the time. Jesus. <laughs> Alan, you're a true savage, man. Right? Yeah. No, I mean, it was emotionless. To be there. But that shit was hilarious. It was. <laughs> She's never been the same since. Right. <laughs> well, I don't know. Okay, that was my story. That is kind of funny, actually. <laughs> so. I don't know it's fucked up, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> no, I know. That's the thing, like, whatever. So that's Ugh. my strip club story. Steve, what's your experience with the movie Showgirls? Uh, man, I remember being conscious of it coming out when it came out, but I was 12, so obviously I, I didn't see it in theaters. I think the first time I saw it, I was probably 13 or 14, a year, a year or two after it came out on, on one of the television movie channels, like Cinemax, HBO, whatever, same as you. And uh, I, at first, I was super fascinated by the idea of seeing it, like going into my first viewing of it, because I knew Elizabeth Berkley from Saved by the Bell. And I wasn't even really that into her necessarily, but it was just like, oh, this is weird. This is chick from, from Saved by the Bell. And... This is the guy that directed RoboCop, and I was conscious of RoboCop, and like there's all this nudity, and I want to see all the nudity because I'm 14. And uh, and the, after watching it the first time, I was like, I don't get most of this movie, and I think it's stupid. And I'm not gonna probably not watch it again for a while. <laughs> here we are, <laughs> right here we are. And uh, you know what? I ended up actually wa- watching it subsequently two or three more times. But my second viewing of it wasn't until years, years later, and. Uh, we can get into this over the course of the podcast, but somehow like, despite the fact that I genuinely hate this movie and everyone in it, I also love it and we'll probably watch it again at some point. <laughs> well, we could always watch the sequel. Pennies from heaven. <laughs> Pennies from heaven, my friend. You know, actually when you were telling that story, it made me think I, I knew about showgirls from a throwaway line in the movie scream. Oh, uh, Jamie Kennedy is asked what his favorite scary movie is. So, uh, what's up? What's your favorite scary movie? Showgirls. Absolutely frightening. What's yours? And he it's says right. Showgirls. <laughs> and right. I didn't get it at all at the time. I was like, what does that mean? I have I no idea what this that. is. But then later, of course, I saw it and uh, I get it now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Showgirls. Um, Alan, what's what's the summary of this movie? What is Showgirls about? It's about the woman Nomi, I guess Elizabeth Berkeley. Yeah, Nomi. Nomi, and her rise and fall through the showgirl dancing world, which is like topless dancing. <laughs> and it's uh, the cliche like she has to start from the bottom and work her way up, and then she gets to the top, and then all this tragedy and things happen and then she finds out it's not what it was 
supposed to be, and it's a pretty typical story arc. I'd say so, except for maybe without the character arc. Um, <laughs> nobody learns anything in this movie, I don't think, except Nomi just decides she kind of doesn't want to do this anymore. I, I disagree with you just slightly okay. in that I feel like she knew what she was getting into, but wanted to do it anyway. See, and I think they intended for the takeaway to be that Nomi found that even at the top, everyone's a whore, and that it really was a discovery for her. Interesting. Yeah, so we've got three slightly varied opinions on <laughs> <Yeah>. that one point. <laughs> this movie, who knew this movie could be so... Divisive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who well, knew Showgirls would be so divisive? It's our first three-way disagreement. <laughs> Steve... I, I like the worst movie. <laughs> I mean, you were saying that this movie has upset a lot of people, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, and clearly. I mean, regardless of what I find, let's say, endearing about it. Like, pe- people people were pissed off. I mean, and, and, and I think rightfully so. To some degree, the movie is at least a little bit misogynistic. It's, it's kind of a vile story. Like, there's nothing redeeming about any of the characters. Some of the lines, people people were terrible about. I mean, and for, you can understand why when you get gems like, you know, everybody's got AIDS. <laughs> and Shit. it must be weird not to have anybody come on you. You know, these are these are moments when it's like, yeah, okay, I can see why someone thought that might be gratuitous. At the same time, though, like, I, th- I think that's a good sign. If we can still make films that people hate and find repulsive and offensive, then we're doing something right. Like, <laughs> oh, Elizabeth Berkeley, right? And I mean, my understanding—this could be wrong—but my understanding is she left Saved by the Bell early so that she could be released to do this movie, thinking that it would be the stepping stone toward the, her, the rest of her adult career. And it was. <laughs> <laughs> she now works at a Kmart. Right. So I'd say that it was a stepping stone to her career. She's been in a few other things. I was, I was surprised to see. I looked up her resume out of curiosity. She's even done some, some dubbing work for uh, anime. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, I say we start off at the top here. Um, so Showgirls opens up with... Um, Naomi hitting the road, you know? I She's was Nomi. Nomi. Nomi Malone, which is like, I think it's supposed to be like, know me alone. Like, <laughs> her name is supposed to have some kind of meaning. <laughs> Deep. I actually made a note of the opening scene because I, ne- I never saw this movie. This was the first time seeing it. But that opening, like, I want to say minute, when the sh- it's like a long shot of like some like Midwest highway and it kind of pans out to the open road and... I actually really like that beginning opening scene. You know what I do too? Oddly, it's like a, it's a tracking shot where it just yeah. follows her. You can see she's like uh, walking up to like a, a big highway. Yeah, exactly. To hitch a ride. You see a sign off to the side that says like Vegas, however three hundred miles mm-hmm. or however far away it is. Right. It, it does kind of capture your interest straight away. Oh, yeah, yeah, I thought that was like really well shot. The rest of the movie we're going to talk about. I mean, I think there's good shots in here and there sprinkled in, mm-hmm. but the the problem arises as soon as people start talking. The the <laughs> the issues with this movie are not functional in respect to the way it was shot. They're it's character and scripting issues. Like I, I agree with you. I think there's some really really nice uh, cinematography work in the movie actually. Yeah, the, I like the beginning, like that like whole minute maybe give or take, but like you said, when it shows her going to the highway and she's like hitching a ride. Yeah. And she hitches a ride and some like doofy guy with a mullet picks her up. She pulls a switchblade on him for some reason that I don't remember. He says like You can sit a little bit closer if you want. It was a bad idea. Chill, okay? I'm chill. Sure, I'm glad you're gonna be such good company. Something that Why don't you sit a little closer? Yeah, you wanna sit closer and she pulls out a knife. It's like <laughs> Fuck you, asshole, or something. Yeah, right from the beginning, she's very like hostile and cold, and her character is very off-putting. Not even just for the movie, but like her acting. Like the whole time, her character was just pissed off for no reason. Yeah, she's angry, and the the movie pretty much involves her talking to someone and getting mad and walking away angrily. She is potentially the least likable character in the history of motion pictures. I mean, yeah, right? Like she's just like sulking angrily the whole movie. Right? And everyone, everyone. I mean, and admittedly, the rest of the cast are largely just as repulsive as she is. And none of them are out for anyone other than themselves in the end. But like, it, it, it just, there, it's her story. You could have retitled this showgirl Nomi's Tale and it would be just as accurate. It would be stupider, but it would be just as accurate. She's the driving force of the film and I just, nobody, everyone hates her. 
Yeah, yeah. I hate her for sure. <laughs> God damn her. Um, she she makes her way to Vegas with this guy, and uh, he ends up robbing her. She leaves her suitcase in his truck, and the guy offers her like a job and or something, and he's like, "My dad owns the casino. I'll get you a job." <laughs> Wait right here, I'll be back. And he just like drives off with her truck or with her uh, suitcase. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great start. So here we have her first tantrum, which is um, her like hitting a random car in the parking lot. And uh, some woman who we find out her name's Molly walks up and is like, Stop fucking around with my car. And uh, Naomi tantrums her way into the road and almost gets run over, but Molly like saves her. Right, so this is an intro to Molly, who becomes like her best friend. Um, very suddenly, actually, Molly's like, "Oh, I know you were just kind of like banging on my car, but you want to go get lunch or something?" Right? Yeah, like she finds she finds Nomi like kicking the shit out of her car. Then Nomi curses her out and tries to run into the street. Then Molly saves her life, gets no thank you for it. Gets, in fact, an angry response to it, and then is like, "Do you want to go get a meal?" And at the meal, she ends up getting part of the meal thrown on her. <laughs> And her response to that is, do you want to move into my one-bedroom trailer with me? <laughs> did we just become best friends? Right. I think we did. <laughs> Wait, I, my favorite part of that whole little interaction is when they're having lunch, and uh, Molly just kind of casually asks, like, where are you from? Where are you from? Back east. From where back east? Different places. Different places, <laughs> really dramatically. Oh yeah, just because she asked her like a simple question. Yeah, she's like over dramatic about she it. Throws her fry. Yeah. <laughs> Different places. How dare you ask me where I'm from? <laughs> right. Anyway, there was there's some second question, and that's what gets like the phone, the food thrown at her. It's like, how dare you ask me two questions <laughs> about something generic to someone you just met? Different places, man. Different places. All right. Can't you just accept the vague, angry answer I gave you? <laughs> it actually cuts here to uh, six weeks later, where I guess now they're living together and um, Nomi has a job and they have their little friendship banter about who ate the chips or something. You don't have to be to work three hours. What are you going to do? Watch TV and eat chips? Yeah. Where are the chips? Ooh. You ate them, didn't you? Mm-mm. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did! <laughs> you did! Stop. You did! Oh, come on, no. Right? The whole movie, I was so confused as to whether they were, like, just really close friends or, like, lesbians. Because they were, like, really close in a lot of scenes. And, like, the weird banter back and forth. Yeah. It was, like, awkward. I mean, they're supposed to be close friends, but I see what you're getting at because there's, like, a lot of... um hints that like Nomi might go both ways in the movie yeah. and uh yeah yeah so that was confusing throughout well, the whole movie because there's this like there's like air of sexual tension with everyone she talks to <laughs> well like at that point would they when you get to the six weeks later moment it makes the first what is that 10 or 15 minutes of the movie you've seen up to that point completely pointless that should have been trimmed you didn't need any of it they could have just established Nomi and Molly are friends and they live together in this trailer through exposition. It could have been it could have been like two minutes worth of additional dialogue would have set the whole thing up. What did you need no, man. this other content for? Nomi's alone. <laughs> Nomi <I'm> alone. <laughs> you know? Oh God. Uh here we meet uh Crystal Connors because Molly works for like this showgirl show. She's like an assistant or something. I don't know. She carries around a clipboard and she's like... a wardrobe assistant. Okay, yeah, that's right. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even note that down. <laughs> okay, can we go over from even from the beginning that Crystal is like the biggest star for this like one production? We could have brought anyone into this show. Latoya, Suzanne, you name it. We wanted Crystal. Crystal Connors defines what Las Vegas is all about. She's dazzling, she's exciting, and she's very, very sexy. How does it feel to be back in what Vegas? What about Broadway? Miss Connors, how did you feel about the show tonight? I think it's the best show I've ever been in. I only hope I can do it justice. You did, here, my Crystal. dear, and you will. We're very thrilled to have you here with us. And I am thrilled to be Ms. Connors, here. Miss Connors, how old are you? You too now. But the whole movie centers around this one production 
for like this one show in all of Vegas. Like, why is this like the ultimate thing? Like, there's like other shows, there's other casinos. Vegas is huge, but this whole movie's like this is like the grandest of all, and it just they never explain like why or how this is like the best show ever. They got they don't hold a candle to Siegfried and Roy. I'll say that. <laughs> This is before the days of Chris Angel, of course. <laughs> oh, and <God>. David Blaine. <laughs> I don't think David Blaine has ever had a Vegas show, has my he? friend. No, he hasn't. Let's huh? just all agree that Goddess was a very good show in a pre-Mind Freak era. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they had in 1995. <laughs> but it just, they never explain how this is like the, this is like everyone's reality. You know, this is all that it's about is just like this one show. And if you can make it. You know, in, before I ever went to Vegas as a kid, what I had in mind as far as what Vegas is is not dissimilar from the show they present in this. Seriously, I thought Vegas was like showgirls dancing on stage, doing high kicks. I didn't know they get naked, but, you right. know, I was a kid. It's like a, like a burlesque where they're in lingerie, but they're not really nude. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is a thing, right? These, these are real shows. Like, this is supposed to represent a thing that actually exists. I've never seen a show like this, so I really have no well, idea. Well, you know, that's yeah. funny you mentioned that. Because I was just thinking, I think it's been getting a lot more conservative over time, especially now, because there are shows like that. But now it's mostly, I guess what you would say, family friendly. It's just like theatrical shows or like gymnastics or magic tricks and shit. I think like that shit was way more common back in the day. I think they've come to the realization in the last 20, 30 years that like a lot of adults get one vacation a year and their kids have to go with them like during summer. Yeah. So if you make Vegas somewhere you can actually take your kids, the adults might end up there and then they'll gamble at night, you know? It's like at the end of Casino. Like yeah. Like now yeah. it's fucking Disneyland. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I think Showgirls was maybe kind of at the tail end or last of its era where, again, it still yeah. exists now, but it's not like that at all. No, you know? I think you're right, actually. It's a very astute point because like, a couple of the casinos featured on the strip in that film no longer exist yeah. and they were some of the outliers that had been there since the... 50s or 60s. Yeah, and especially and, then when that was way more prevalent then. Right. Yeah. And yeah, which is pretty crazy. It really kind of was like the the last gas. Things had already changed a lot, but it kind of was the last gasp of that that era of Vegas. Yeah. So there's no Crystal Connors now? <laughs> right. <laughs> now we got Celine Dion. It, it seems like you got to go to the really shady Hello. places off the strip for that kind of thing now. Like, oh, I guess, I don't know. I think the... What See, are those dudes? The, 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 yeah. I've seen, like, like I think, like, the Chippendales posters in one of the casinos before. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. But it seems like the really sleazy stuff. It's That's a lot of, mean. like, Siegfried and Roy and... and uh, uh, Circus Dale. Cirque du Soleil. LA. Yeah, the there Blue you go. Blue Man Group. Blue Man Group Stomp. <laughs> it seems like it's all stuff like that. Yeah. Like, last time I was in Vegas... I don't know if it was you or not, Alan, but the last time I was in Vegas, uh, it, like 11 o'clock at night, it's a huge line outside the auditorium in, in the, into the casino of, of a lot of adults with like teenage kids waiting to get into the auditorium to see a Cirque du Soleil show that yeah. started at like midnight. <laughs> it, like That's fucking crazy. I've yeah. seen those shows. I like them. <laughs> right? No, I mean, that, and the no, shows are cool. cool. The shows are cool, but like it's weird to think like at 11 o'clock on a Friday night in a casino, in a, a Smokeville casino in Las Vegas... You're in line with, like, your 12-year-old to see Cirque du Soleil. Like, I, really? Okay. Yeah. This isn't uh, the Vegas of old, my friend. Right? I guess not, man. Well, in Showgirls, it's still the old Vegas. Yeah, and they got a Crystal Connors who's, like, the superstar showgirl. I guess they need to have, like, a central figure in their showgirl show, and it's Crystal Connors. <laughs> um, I don't, which one of you guys wants to describe Crystal Connors? Steve. All right. <laughs> Crystal, played by Gina Gershon. I think Gina Gershon is the only person in the entire film, other than maybe Kyle MacLachlan, that understood what was going on and just completely took advantage of it. <laughs> like, I really do think she was camping up her performance this role just because she was like, oh, I get it. Fuck it. Let's do it. Like, full full commitment. <clears throat> um, Crystal is, you kind of find out, is it, it alluded to sort of maybe from a white, what you might call a white trash background. Um, very Southern girl. Uh, clearly has done some less than savory things with herself, professionally speaking, and eventually crawled her way to the to the top, so yeah, to speak. She's like self made and tough, right? You know, and she's now like the the lead of this this partially nude review called Goddess, 
which is, I mean, it's just, it's, it's the weirdest show you've ever seen in your life. There's a oh, giant yeah. volcano the on volcano. stage. It's constantly going. It's clearly a sexual innuendo. It's just a bunch of dancers writhing Painted. around. Painted, right, and strange BDSM-inspired concepts. And she, Crystal, comes rising out of the volcano, topless, and does very little of anything. And... You know, and, the, and 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 this is treated as as art. And it's like the best show in right, Vegas. The best she's show the in star. Vegas, and there's all these people in the yeah. audience, just this massive oh applause. God. And backstage, she's getting flowers, she's and there's a press the conference, <laughs> right, to talk about how great she is. And it's it, it, it's it's kind of like this character only exists to give Nomi something to aspire to. Like, there's no other reason for her to be there. So she can aspire to be that useless character? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's got to be... There has to be a top for Nomi to get to, and Crystal is it. So... If you try hard, one day you can be this useless. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then the dream. <laughs> and then when they meet and they have lunch with each other and they establish all that background and they find that they've both eaten dog food at oh, some point in their doggy life. Chow. Doggy chow is my favorite. God, I love doggy chow. Such a Another golden line. Scene. Do you like brown rice and vegetables? Yeah. You do? Sort of. Really? It's worse than dog food. <laughs> it is. I've had dog food. You have? Mm-hmm. Long time ago. Doggy chow. Oh, I used to love doggy chow. <laughs> I used to love doggy chow too. That hurt to watch. That was so awkward. Right? Like they literally talked about like she said that. They both love doggy chow. Yeah. They're like, I've had it too. And it's like, oh, they're they're they've got this common ground, they're just alike. You know, and you so Chris, Crystal and Nomi have this overlap, but it's supposed to be kind of deep it's deep character it's bonding. So deep they both eat dog food. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean You've never sat down with your friends and been like, so you ever eat pet food? <laughs> what kind do you have? Friskies? Right. What's good? What the fuck are you talking about? What? <laughs> you know, somehow when I was like six and trying to sneak something out of the, the pantry at my house, it was always like a cookie rather than dog food. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm a weirdo. I had a dog as a kid. I never ate the fucking dog food. Right? That would be lunacy to me. Like, Yeah. Like, it, I mean, I just, I can't imagine. I had dogs all growing up. I could never, I was never like, I want to open one of the cans of dog food and eat it. Well, if you two ever have kids and the kid wants to have a taste of the dog food, show them showgirls and say, this is what happens when, when you eat dog, dog food. Dog food. You turn into Crystal Connors. <laughs> or know me. Or no, right? So oh, they God. both love dog food. That they, was a weird. Yeah, they have a, a real strong bond on that. It's disgusting. Way weird. I don't know why you would put that in. Like, and there's no other mention of it ever. There's no reason for it. They never talk about it. Like, why? Why is that in the movie? I, why? That's <laughs> the thing. I think. I think you're right. That's the thing I find the weirdest because they have that character bonding moment. It, the whole reason that even comes up is because they're having this character bonding moment. Sure. They're supposed to realize how alike each other are, but there's no. There's no real reason from a character development standpoint for that scene to be there. It's another one that's like that bonding achieves nothing. Right. They're not friendly at all for the remainder of the film. In fact, they're so competitive, it turns into violence. And so, Even in the bonding scene, <laughs> even if that was there, which it is, you could pick literally anything else to bond with. And the director's like, no, it has to be dog food. That's what they wrote into well, the fucking story? I, I think the reasoning there, I'm, I'm stretching a little bit. I think the okay. reasoning there, though, was for Nomi to, to suddenly look at Crystal and say, okay, this woman is future me. Like, like I'm, it's supposed to be this yeah. reflective thing. Like, I'm going to turn into her, even though she's what I hate. No, I know. And, but but like, they could pick anything else to be that medium. Like right. ride dog food. Right. Oh, I don't know. Just that extreme, <laughs> yeah. I guess. I think that they're trying to underline like how bad Nomi's background was, which you find out like a teardrop more about later in the film. I but yes, no, yeah. but that whole scene to the weird. shock of no one. It yeah, turns exactly. out she was like a hooker. Right, yeah, just like a, mur a hooker with a, a history of committing like petty violence. Right. Yeah. yeah. She probably like gotten a few midnight like brawls with people at clubs <laughs> or bars. I mean, we even see that happen shortly after when we meet James. Um, Nomi and Molly, they go out to a, a nightclub to have fun where you get to see for the first time Nomi's amazing dancing abilities, which are, are highlighted by surrounding characters as they say she's like the best dancer we've ever seen, things like that. James actually says that, or James. maybe it's his friend at the nightclub. But uh, Alan, how would you describe Nomi's dancing at the nightclub? Uh, very rigid. <laughs> Stiff, like angry, 
She dances really angry. In fact, every dance in this is like angry in the way. None of it is slow or like even sensual, I would guess. It's all very hard turns and hard thrusts and just very like very high energy. Yeah, there's turns. a lot of like stiff like um like throw my hands up in the air yeah, and hold exactly. them there for a second and then like throw them forward and then spin a couple times. Her really arms fast. are like kind of like windmilling around in circles a lot and I don't know. It's very it, like angsty. Her, her dancing is, is so bizarre it's because bizarre, it's supposed yeah. to be amazing. You got more natural talent when you dance than anybody I've ever seen. It's more like she's just pissed off and just letting energy loose. She's I'm not gonna even like dancing. Showcase my emotions in interpretive dance. <laughs> if humans lived underwater and something larger fished us, that's what it would look like when one got pulled out of the water. <laughs> Absolutely. To quote Qui Gon, there's always a bigger fish. <laughs> there it is, Star Wars reference. Got it out of the way. <laughs> nice. Uh, I don't know. I'm looking for a Jawa stick in somewhere. So we got to get one an episode, you know? right? <laughs> in one of the scenes when they're when she's first training to be on the show, the the redheaded trainer or that like I guess he's supposed to be gay. Is he supposed to be gay? Oh, uh, pretty much so. I think so. Yeah, the the gay trainer or the show. He director, is pretty flamboyant. The yeah. flamboyant <laughs> <laughs> director. He says that she's all thrust. How does she do? She's no butterfly. Tony, she's all pelvic thrust. I mean, she prowls. She's got it. She's all pelvic thrust. Yeah. <laughs> she certainly is. Uh, he's so that's the a only, good way to describe it. He's the only one in the whole film that accurately describes Nomi's dancing. Everyone else is like, oh my thrust. God, she's brilliant. She's the best. You've got the most natural talent of anyone else I've ever seen in my life. You got more natural talent when you dance than anybody I've ever seen. Here's this one dude that's like, all she's doing is humping the air. What the fuck are you talking about? James <laughs> is the guy that says that, and he immediately becomes obsessed with her. Right. At the nightclub, he sees her, and he goes to dance with her. She says, like, are you good? And he says, yeah, I'm good. And he, he's also horrible. Like, <laughs> his dancing, it's a lot of, like, um, how can I describe it verbally? It's a lot oh. of, like, <laughs> like, spinning your fists around. Bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's not good, though. I think that's a pretty general consensus. Yeah. I mean, James is a bouncer at this nightclub, and uh, he gets fired over her for the first time in the movie. <laughs> I don't remember exactly how. Like, he bumps into some guy, and the guy's like, get out of the way, asshole. And he's right. like, fuck you, I'm a bouncer. And they start fist fighting, and Nomi leaves. And somehow it's her fault that he got fired. You know, he holds it against her. It's like, dude, you, you were working. You chose to go dance with this chick, and then you bumped into it. Like, it's... None of this really had anything to do with her. Is that when Nomi gets arrested? Yeah. Yeah, I think that is when Nomi gets arrested. Yeah, yeah, because he meets her at the station. He, like, finds her. He, yeah, like, he stalks her, her yeah. <laughs> and to the police station. That's when you find out he's been fired over it. Yeah. He, he's, like, really trying to get her to, like, go on a date with him, and she's not having it, at least at this point. Yo, what's up? Hey, I bailed you out, girl. Don't that even give me a cup of coffee? Look, all I did was tell you I'd teach you to dance. I don't need nobody to teach me to dance. That's because you're a badass. You got your arm straight out saying, back off, motherfucker. Yeah, you got that down. Back off, motherfucker. <laughs> Woo. You know what? My head hurts, my dick hurts, and you got me fired from my fucking job. Yeah, well, shit happens, you know? Shit happens. What? That's it? That's what I get? Fucking wisdom? That's it? Yeah, that's it. You get wisdom. Their relationship is so odd. It's like, it's, it's, it suddenly turns later, like very quickly, where she is interested all of a sudden. And right. then she feels betrayed when he finds a new girl. It's weird. But right now, I guess she, uh, yeah, she doesn't like him. And a little bit later, we see her at her actual job, which is, uh, she's a stripper. And there's a few interesting characters at the stripper. One is Henrietta. Um, Henrietta is like, she is a, like an overweight, like stand up comedian, I think. She just goes on stage and like roasts people, I, I think. Yeah, I'm she's sort of like a modern vaudeville performer, but in a strip club. She's like the comedic relief. Yeah. <laughs> in between dancers, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> that would be interesting. Someone comes up in between and just does like a set. Like that right? was like what she was kind of doing, right? Yeah, With, like yeah. the inflatable and her weird fucking. She has like a boob trick. Yeah, she like boob moves trick. her arms a certain way and her boobs flop out and make a honking sound. Like a fucking clown. <laughs> yeah, like a clown. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was that. That's weird. Uh, Henrietta is probably that. the one character in this movie I like, just because she's so different from anyone, everyone else. She like doesn't give a fuck what people think. And she's just kind of funny and goofy, and I guess it's just nice to see someone different in this uh, cutthroat showgirls environment. Right. That... Everybody's terrible. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I somehow I like uh, the owner of the strip club, Robert Davi. I, somehow I like his character. Oh, yeah. Um, the, one of the Fratelli brothers from the Goonies. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> Not Francis, the other one. I don't remember right. his name. But he's like from like what the Bronx or Philly or what's like that Jersey. I don't right. even know. But like East Coast. I mean, he does deliver one of the worst lines of the entire film. But and his character is a repulsive guy, kind of. But somehow I just he he indulges. I think he may be the only other one other than Gershon that you know the three of them. I'm going to include Henrietta in there too. You know, like I think that those three were the ones that that got to set and saw what was happening. We're like, sweet, we're just gonna go with this. And Unfortunately, never... the lead did not get it. No, no, Elizabeth Berkeley did not seem to get it. Yeah, I just named <laughs> off like three different places, but in the movie and his accent, where is that guy supposed to be from? I don't think they ever say. Like, just, some some generic, kind of like generic East Coast. East yeah. Coast. Yeah. Well, he does. He he's like giving a new stripper like the uh, intro to working there, and he's like saying how. You take them to the back and you do a lap dance. Now, if they come, it's okay. If they take it out, come all over you, call a bouncer. Unless he gives you a big tip. If he gives you a big tip, it's okay. <laughs> and then there's the, oh, God, that, that line where he's like, what, what's the line? He's like, if you get a big enough tip, everything's fine or, and you can do whatever you want. Right. Like, I get a $200 say? cut. Yeah, no, he says something like, it's fine as long as there's a big enough yeah, tip. Yeah, it's fine as long as they give you a big tip. Yeah. It's like, oh shit. That was a ridiculous line. Yeah, that guy's. His character's name is Al, I think, right? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's the owner of the strip club that Nomi works at. So Nomi's kind of doing her thing, and she sees Crystal Connors, who she met earlier, and uh, she shows up with uh, Kyle McLaughlin. What's, la- what's his character yeah. name? Zach. Zach, yeah. Zach, yeah. Uh, basically, she gives Zach a lap dance, um, and I think he comes in his pants. Oh God! But the, her lap dance is horrible. The first instance of fish sex between the two of them. The flopping, <laughs> like, what is she doing? It makes no sense, and it just looks weird. She's flopping like a fish. <laughs> Wait, you guys aren't into seizures? Yeah, it's the fish flop maneuver, is what I wrote down. She like straddles his crotch, and then she throws her back and just starts like swinging her whole body. It's terrible. And not sexy in any way. Yep. It's not good. And in the back room where she's doing this, uh, James kind of just like creepily peeks his head through and is watching this whole thing occur. Remember, James is the bouncer from the nightclub. He's like the um, whatever, thinks he's a good dancer. He's a black guy. He has uh, really weird hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember, I remember that scene. He's like just watching, so it's like weird. Yeah. He's watching that whole thing go down, and he yells at her later about it. He says, uh, I saw you fuck that guy. When clearly <laughs> she was giving a lap dance, and the guy's clothes were on. Yeah. That's such a... Okay, th- this is probably my favorite line in the movie, because later on when James confronts Nomi about that, he's like, I saw you fuck that guy. You danced like when you fucked that guy last night. What guy? That guy with the chick. You took him in the back. I didn't fuck him. <laughs> yeah, you did. You fucked him and her. Are you following me around? I didn't fuck anybody. I, was I fu- saw you. Man, everybody got AIDS and shit. Everybody <laughs> got AIDS and shit. Like, what? <laughs> what is that? This is very, like, uninformed. He's, like, very uninformed on <laughs> AIDS and how that works. Right, like, a lap dance? <laughs> Someone wrote this on a, on a piece of paper, presumably, or typed it, passed it around to a group of executives. It got, went to a director... A script supervisor went to the actors. Someone read it off in front of a camera. They used that take. They put it in this movie, and we watched it last week. Like, what the fuck? How did all that happen? <laughs> Everyone approved this? No one at any point in the process was like, well, well, this is, like, weird, or we shouldn't put this? Man, everybody got AIDS and shit. 
<laughs> this was 1995, so there's no excuse at that point. Yeah, they, I mean, the Coke knew. era was mostly over. Yeah, they knew like, how. I, age that works. line is so weird, and the delivery is so weird. Yeah. I mean, it, I, for no reason, he just says it. <laughs> people at the studio would have seen the script. People at the studio would have been seeing dailies during production. Like, it's really weird that no one was like, you know what, guys, we may be going too far. <laughs> like, and he meant he says that, and then there's no other reference. There's no other point. Nothing ever goes back to AIDS in any way. Like he just says it, and says the movie it in never reference to a lap dance. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone's got AIDS and shit. Yeah, well, that dude had his pants on the whole time, so don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, I didn't see him bleeding from anywhere, so <laughs> <laughs> I think he might be fine. Right? Yeah, you're probably all right. Like, you know, AIDS isn't transmissible by air, right? And yeah, that's where James kind of really continues to talk up Nomi. He's like, I wrote a number for you. You're the best dancer I've ever seen. You got to come perform with me. All that stuff. But at this point in time, she's not really having it. He's a scrub. So later on at work at the strip club, someone approaches Nomi and says, uh, you know, there's an opening for this show, Goddess. We want you to be on. Do you want to come audition? So, uh, I mean, we find out later that it was Crystal that asked the guy to come get Nomi, but... She auditions to be in Goddess. Um, she meets the guy that's running the audition. Alan, do you want to tell us about this whole audition process? Oh, my God. That whole thing is crazy. I don't even re- remember the guy's name. What was the guy's name? I don't know. He's in, like, two scenes. He's in, like, two scenes. He's, like, the big shot director. He's, like, the main guy. Well, he's, like, the audition guy. You got to get through this hard ass. Yeah. He's, like, a drill sergeant. Yeah, and his first line says, he says, I don't care whether you live or die. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see you dance. And he's just the most hard-ass guy. Like, all he cares about is how well you can dance and perform and, like, sell the show. And he says that, like, every other line. Okay, ladies. I'm Tony Moss. I produce this show. Some of you probably hear that I'm a prick. I am a prick. I got one interest here, and that's the show. I don't care whether you live or die. I want to see you dance, and I want to see you smile. I can't use you if you can't smile. I can't use you if you can't show. I can't use you if you can't sell. Let me take a look at you. Spread out. And he tells them he doesn't care whether they live or die. Not realizing <laughs> that if they're dead, they can't dance at all. Yeah. And it's, it's a dance audition. No one's going to die, I hope. If, you if this guy die, doesn't care if you do die. <laughs> yeah, if you die, you die. <laughs> this is the hardest show he's in like, Vegas. He's Ivan Drago. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he dies. He dies. Yeah, so, but he makes that very clear and he yells it almost like he's just a total hard ass. Yeah, and he's like, the way he like fires people for stupid shit is so, it it just Arbitrary. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. Like he's, he It's just, just a show, he's just firing people just to show like how hard ass he is. Like, oh look, he's firing people and he doesn't give a fuck, you know? I know, like he, <laughs> he asks some girl like, what kind of classes have you had? Ice skating classes, Mr. Moss. Ballet classes, technique classes, stretch classes, jazz classes, jazz technique classes. The show is called Goddess. It ain't called classes. See ya. Too many classes. You're out. <laughs> yeah, you're fired. Like, look how hard this guy is. He doesn't give a fuck. For having too much knowledge, she gets fired. Good job. <laughs> the slightest thing, you're just out and you could you'd fire you. You know, he has no remorse. <laughs> <laughs> He narrows down their, uh, their list of dancers to, like, Nomi and, like, two other people. They're performing, they're trying out, and he makes Nomi put ice on her tits because her, I guess her nipples aren't hard enough. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, uh, that's a weird scene. After too. all the shit that happens, like, that's the last straw. This is one of the many cases of Nomi gets mad and storms out. Like, she's like, no, you want me to put ice on my boobs? I can't do that. I may be a stripper, but <laughs> never ask me to put ice on my boobs, man. Oh. Even though I've exhibited no class throughout the entirety of this film, I've got too much class for this. <laughs> too degrading. I'm going back to the strip club. <laughs> oh, okay. So after that, that's when she meets James again. Yeah. I think as, is it as she's leaving that, she's upset. Yep. And she's mad. She meets James again. And James gets fired again. <laughs> this is where he gets fired what job a second is he doing? time. He's a valet. Or he's like a busboy. Bellhop. Bellhop. Yeah, he's a, bellhop. He's a hotel bellhop. bellhop. He's like moving luggage. Bellhop, yeah. Because he has the jacket and uh, he ends up giving his boss the coat because his boss is like, oh, you're supposed to be working. And he's like, I quit. And he throws him his coat. Yeah, Nomi walks by and says like, uh, 
I've had enough of this shit. And James sees her and he's like, hey, hey, it's me, James. What are you doing? What's going on? And the boss keeps walking by. He's like, hey, you can't talk right now. We have to, we have work to do. And he's like, just give me a minute. And he keeps saying that, just give me a minute. And the, the guy says, okay, you need to get back to work. And he's like, you know what? I'm having a fucking conversation here, god damn it. Like, <laughs> you're talking to her, and you're interrupting my conversation. And that's rude. Now get the fuck out of here. Asshole. You're fired. Yeah? Take this jacket. Come on. Now look what you've done. You got me fired again. <laughs> Like, dude, you're on the fucking clock. Yeah, you're being paid right now. Yeah, like, seriously. <laughs> this chick you barely know and you're going to quit your job over her and you're like that into it. <laughs> She's got more natural talent than he's ever seen. <laughs> Clearly. You so, can, you're the best air humper I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> She's all pelvic thrust, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, they go back to James's like apartment slash dance studio and... Um, James says he, he wrote this dance routine for her. So they do this little, like, sexy dance-off thing. <laughs> Steve, can you tell us about this whole... Uh, it, it's just this super... I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's awkward. It's cliche. They, 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 they start dancing, and he's going to show her how to be this great dancer, and it turns into them, like, having this sort of competition to see who can outdance the other. And then, of course, it's just too much physical contact and it turns into almost sex yeah like almost they, sex almost they start sex. dancing closer and closer and then it's supposed to build the tension like yeah they want each other but it's they're so just sexy. dancing all right yeah <laughs> basically <laughs> turns into a lap dance yeah, and yeah. you well, think they're gonna bang that's all she's good at frankly <laughs> i mean and i don't mean that as of elizabeth berkeley the human being i mean nomi malone the character that is all that she's no, good you at mean all women that's all they're good for <laughs> right well that too <laughs> that's, but, a, that's steve's position everyone right in <laughs> absolutely um but uh but no you're, he's right in the movie they don't have any other like development for her then that's all she does right that's all she does that's, that's like all, all she her character yeah it's also, and she's not even really good at those because she's doing the flippity floppity fishy sex <laughs> you know <laughs> like, the seizure girl, <laughs> and, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it's terrible. But then you know, it, it it has to stop short of actual intercourse in one of the most tasteful scenes oh, that's God. ever been on screen, where she insists that she's on her period, and he claims she's lying, and she proves it by having him just feel it for himself. Yeah. And, and she like, says, "Check," and he puts his hand down her pants, right? And you see him examine his fingers, and it's a very unpleasant thing to watch. Yeah, why why is that in the movie? Just like you said, I think about what you said like five minutes ago. How many <laughs> writers, how many like managers, there all the people it went through and everyone's like, yeah, this is fine. So <laughs> many moments in this movie in which they make it clear that they were actively making an effort to be the opposite of classy in any respect whatsoever. Like that, I think that had to have been the intent. I mean, if they want to go all out, they should just like have him take a dump on her face. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's nothing like a little fecophilia to really sell it, you know, at the cinematic level. Fuck but... it. It's NC-17. Yeah, right? Like you can't get worse than that, right? Ugh. Yeah, but like you said, it was just not good to watch. It just, it's weird. It's not good. It's no. not a good thing. So you cap off an awkward attempt at bad sexiness with that. And it, like, what? Am, what what's my takeaway going to be? Yeah. I mean, like I said before, the... There's things that they want to be sexy in this movie, and they're just not. No. The way they deliver it isn't good. It's not no. a good thing. <laughs> right. It's all bad. Anyway, um, so after all that nonsense, Nomi gets the big job at the Stardust where she's going to be on the show. What's it called? Goddess. She's going to be on Goddess. Yeah. She's going to be one of the many dancers. And she gets a visit from her old uh, pals from the strip club, Henrietta and Al. And they come and they give her, you know... Some congratulations and... So, you like it here? What do you think, she's gonna miss you? Yeah, why not? We miss her. She misses us like that lump on my twat I had taken off last oh, week. Oh, Jesus, Henry. You <laughs> 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 saw the show. You were good. Thank you, Al. Must be weird not having anybody come on you. What is it that Al says, Steve? It must be weird not having anybody come on you. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like he's walking away and like he slowly turns around. It must be weird not having anyone come on you. 
It's like, was that really a normal day to day occurrence when she worked for you? Because that's kind of disturbing. It's weird that when she was working at, I think it was the Cheetah. Yeah. The Cheetah, which is a funny name. It sounds like a Grand Theft Auto strip club. She was at the Cheetah with Al. The whole time, like, he's supposed to be just a dick. He doesn't care about his dancers. He's just about the money. He's a sleaze bag. But then he comes to visit her when she makes it to the show. Like, he really cares. Like, oh, we came to check in on you and see. And I it's guess. like, oh. I mean, maybe he just had some spare time in between chasing around the Goonies. <laughs> right? No, but I, He's I, supposed I, to be just a dick. He doesn't give a fuck. But it's a good point. It's, it's, it's kind of like, like, like the equivalent of the minor league manager coming to see his player in the major leagues in his first game and then finding him in the locker afterward to be like, ah, slugger, good for you, you made it. You're, You're the it. top kid. You're keeping those elbows up, right? right. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You know, But he's it's, a strip club owner, like, he doesn't give a fuck. It's like the, the last the time he gets advice from his old coach before the old coach kind of disappears. Yeah. You know, it's like, instead, though, it's a, it's a sleazy strip club owner. And he's coming to see a former dancer he didn't particularly get along with, <laughs> and pretending to be in a classy review that's really a bunch of, just a bunch of half naked people writhing in front of a volcano. So, <laughs> like, he's like telling her off, like, you know, you did good. <laughs> if they trimmed all the unnecessary out of this movie, it would be like 14 minutes long. <laughs> yeah. And it's over two hours. So it shows you how much of this film is completely unnecessary. <laughs> So yeah. Nomi wants to share the good big news with James. Of course. And so she goes to his place and uh, she sees that James has a new uh, prodigy. He has like um, one of the other strippers from her strip club staying there. Oh, you can like see her in the oh, background. Penny. Yeah, like Penny. She's at the door and you see her like half naked. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, James is like, well, she can't actually dance. You're my number one dancer, but Nomi ain't having it and she leaves. Right, and then he says the same thing to Penny. Yeah, he's like, she can't dance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think this I is where he, for you. where he tells Nomi that he has a problem with pussy. <laughs> right, look, he's I like, got a problem, a problem with pussy. pussy. He literally says that. <laughs> okay, look, I just wanted you to say... You and me ain't got no ties. I have a problem with pussy. I always have, and I'm always gonna but I meant what I said to you. Look, I'm not interested in your problems, okay? I did write it for you. Yeah. But I did tell her I was going to teach her, and I did fuck her. <laughs> That's another weird-ass line in the movie. <laughs> Just in case anybody was still on the fence at that point in the movie about whether or not any of the characters were not the shittiest human beings who have ever existed, I want to seal it for you. tells you. <laughs> right, yeah. Not out. Like, hey, audience, I am a complete scumbag thank you yeah. i got a problem with line delivery <laughs> right i don't even know what i'm saying right now <laughs> i think i'm reading the footnotes at the bottom of the script turkey sandwich <laughs> <laughs> oh that's on the lunch menu okay right. <laughs> so yeah another great yeah. great line great delivery we yeah. had seen so uh i mean nomi gets the big job and uh you know she interacts with the other dancers and she's she gets on stage like immediately. She's all pelvic thrust. She has the uh, no one's coming on her. No one's coming on her. Must be weird. <laughs> Everyone's got AIDS, so she's thinking about that. She has like a like the lunch with Crystal that we mentioned earlier, where they talk about the doggy chow, and then they they go have a dance practice where it's very similar to the dance practice with James, where it gets really. I guess, quote unquote, sensual, and they like are about to kiss, but they don't. And then it ends with her storming out. Shocking. It, right? I made a note, I think it's somewhere around here, where she does like a, like a bump of cocaine, which I thought was supposed to be the typical like part of the story arc, where now she's like doing drugs. Yeah, yeah. she's moving yeah. up. And she she's specifically mentioned earlier in the film, like, oh, I don't do drugs. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So she does like a bump, and she's like, oh, yeah, like, she's doing cocaine now. So, uh-oh, Nomi's not about just the dancing anymore. <laughs> the life's getting to her. Right. She's becoming one of them. But when she does it, she says she says it's good for your muscles. Or I think maybe Crystal mentions it, oh, actually. Yeah. When they show Crystal doing cocaine, because she does it like several times. <laughs> I think she mentions it's good for your muscles. And I thought that was weird, because that's not true. Or is that supposed to be true? Or uh, why I'm would they say of. that? Yeah. I've never really heard of any positive side effects of cocaine use. <laughs> yeah, you know? That's what I mean. So just there just to prove like she's dumb. Uh -huh. I don't know. I just, that bugged me. That one little line. 
I mean, there's a lot of lines and things in this movie that don't make sense surrounding that even because right after she does the coke, she goes home and she's like feasting on snacks. Oh, right? yeah, that too. Yeah. She gets the coke munchies, I guess. <laughs> coke munchies. Opposite. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? She's like, where are the chips? I need to eat now. I just did a lot of coke. <laughs> I guess in the script it just says she gets high and then goes and eats food. But right. Maybe they didn't specify the drug. It seems like all she ever eats is chips. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, man. I guess dancing burns a lot of calories. I guess so. So uh, she gets offered a little bit later on to represent the hotel that the show is at. Uh, her and another dancer, they have to go to like some boat convention. And they do a little like performance on a boat, I guess. And then they're solicited for sex by some of the... Uh, some of the guys attending the com- the convention. It's, oh yeah, they tell yeah. they tell Nomi or no, they tell Nomi it's easy, and it's only like two days, and you get like a thousand dollars. And you're right, she does the boat thing because they're just standing there to be like eye candy. And then afterwards, with all the business guys, she gets like solicited for sex. Yeah, yeah. The producer or one of the producers of the show tries to solicit her to a Japanese businessman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pretty good. I mean, she declines, and she's really offended by this, and she goes to uh, Kyle McLaughlin and complains to him where he, he, I guess he reprimands the guy in charge, but not really. Like, yeah. Doesn't he call him, like, as soon as Nomi's gone and, like, says, like, oh, it doesn't matter or something? Right. <laughs> yeah, but, he pretends to call him and then berates him. Yeah. He's like, oh, you know, this is unacceptable. How could you? Blah, blah. And then after she leaves, he's like, oh, get back here, you Dumbass. He does a really like he he says a funny line. The guy's like, "Well, she's jumping to conclusion." He says, "No, I'm going to jump to your conclusion." <laughs> or something like that. Hey, hey, hey. What's going on? If I ever hear anything like this again, you're out of here. Zach, nothing happened. Yeah, something happened. She's jumping to conclusion, Zach. And if it happens even... again to anybody, you're going to jump to your conclusion. I actually well, that's funny you mentioned that cuz I wrote that in my note. You're going to jump to your conclusion. You're going to jump to your conclusion. Yeah, like the He's got one of the famous him. jump to conclusion mats. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the it's like the no you meme, you know, like no you. <laughs> oh, that's my pretty God. beautiful, man. Um there's a little bit of a rivalry also going on with two of the dancers that are on the performance with Nomi. They hate each other for some reason that I guess isn't really explained or I missed right. but one of them sets the other one up to like get injured by like she like throws out marbles or something on, <laughs> yeah, the, on the dance like floor in the exact perfect position right. so that she's the one dancer that falls I mean they're all over the stage I don't know how she planned that so perfectly it's tactical yeah yeah so that part's weird because Nomi sees it they make a point to show the shot where Nomi sees it but doesn't end up saying anything and I thought it was kind of dumb how she falls and she injures like her elbow or it's like a career ending injury a knee I think yeah something related her knee or hip or ankle which okay maybe but come on you fell once (laughs) you haven't fallen before no man they're professionals yeah they're professionals and like oh my god she's out it's a TBS (laughs) it's a tactical bead strike (laughs) <laughs> yeah this their career is over because she fell and uh know me because of the whole thing with kyle mclaughlin they start to become like intimate she goes to kyle mclaughlin's mansion and drinks fine champagne and then they go for a swim oh yeah that's a whole nother weird scene <laughs> <laughs> why is it weird alan tell us about the swimming scene what, well, what's so weird about going for a swim they get naked and then you see his butt <laughs> his ass is front and center man yeah so you see his ass and then they're trying to be like sensual they're in the pool they start kind of playing around and getting closer and closer and then she ends up having sex with him under the fountain in the pool but she again does the same fish move <laughs> That's her go-to right there. And the same move twice. This is the second time. This is probably the most infamous scene of the movie, I think, where they have sex in the pool. And she, like, starts riding his dick and doing this crazy, like, I don't know. Like, the director must have said, like, give me a 20. Like, give me a 30, even. like <laughs> Mimic the way you think porpoises have sex. <laughs> yeah. She arcs her back. Just She's on top of him, but her back's completely arched, and she's just flailing. 
Like her arms, her head, just water splashing everywhere. She's flailing like a fish. <laughs> yeah, man. It looks like she's drowning, really. <laughs> it is like that. It's like someone dying. Yeah. Right. And the harder. Having a very serious seizure. <laughs> sure, right. The harder she flails and like the more intense she gets, Ugh. it's like you can see uh, Kyle McLaughlin. He's like better for him. Yeah. Like they keep the same scale. Like the harder she's flailing, the better it is. <laughs> It's so dumb. She's just as good at awkward sex as she is at awkward dancing. Yeah. Which is Nautical to say not very good. be something you wish. Then hop on his dick and flop like a fish. <laughs> oh, oh, now a guy's not allowed to be into fish sex, huh? What a world. <laughs> and that's not even like, well, we're joking about it, but I can't see anybody watching that and not being like, yeah, that's what that is. Like, that is exactly how we're describing oh, it. yeah. I don't think I've ever read a review of this film written by anybody who didn't call out how unsexy the sex scenes yeah. are. Like, like, that's like a fact. Like, that's how it is on the film. I'm not even, not like exaggerating right? it. Like, that's, that's the movie? <laughs> You guys ever see Portlandia? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that guy's the mayor of Portland. Yeah, he's the mayor of Portland and <laughs> yeah. Portlandia. Yeah, he was also, he's also the lead character on Twin Peaks. Oh, okay. Well, one of the lead characters on Twin Peaks. Yeah. yeah. Cal so, McLaughlin, man. He was in a movie uh, when I was a kid called uh, The Boyfriend School, also known as Don't Tell Her It's Me. It's like a really bad 80s romantic comedy. His, uh, his character name in the movie, I'll never forget, it's Trout. <laughs> Trout, right. like the fish. Yeah, I mean, he's been in a bunch. It of, all comes back to the fish, man. He's been in a bunch of David Lynch's movies. He's been in some really good movies. He's also been in some really strange movies and some really terrible movies. What a weird career that guy's had. What's he up to nowadays? Portlandia, mostly. Yeah. Although I think he does still make movies, but I can't think of what the actual last thing he was in was. Every now and then you'll see him pop up. You know. Yeah. I always think of him as Trout myself. And he'll always be Zach from Showgirls. Zach from Showgirls. It's you, Zach from Showgirls. <laughs> if you meet him, then I want to meet him. And that's the character you bring up. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. So they have like an audition. Because remember that dancer fell and she got hurt? That's right. Uh, it's to replace her. I guess it's like a bigger role or something. Yeah, that person is Crystal's understudy. Yeah, that's right. So she's the understudy for the main lead dancer. And Nomi gets that. Mm -hmm. I guess that's something that's worth mentioning. Yeah, but she gets it kind of by coercion because none of the other people want her and Kyle McLaughlin's the one that gets her the job. He basically demands that they just ignore the other chicks, one of whom is the girl that injured the girl who's now out. Yeah. And uh, But then, uh, then later on, Crystal, who apparently recognizes Nomi as a threat, quashes the the position she takes it away from Nomi and gives it to someone else yeah but before that when she first gets it you see all like uh the tension between all the other chicks like they kind of hate her because they know what she's doing and they're like yeah you slept with him or you shouldn't be right. there so everyone kind of shuns her she's like an outcast right. she just underlines that you've got to be a whore to get to the top yeah. theme yep <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, that, that's actually said pretty early on you lose all your money honey you want to make some more it won't take any longer than 15 minutes. Sooner or later, you're going to have to sell it. Right. Um, At least that one thread got kept. Yeah. I guess if anything about this film, they, they maintained that from end to end. <laughs> Which is completely... I don't know if that's supposed to be ironic, but several times, I think, in the movie, she says, I'm not a whore. Oh, yeah. But then, like, she is. And you Absolutely. Found out she was. Yeah. <laughs> so she's just a liar now too. Yeah. Well, it's it's that that <laughs> denial, right? Like the whole time she's denying it, denying it, denying it, and then she finally gets to the top of the show and she and she looks back on what she did to get there, and she's like, oh wait, every every single other person I spoke to who told me that was absolutely right about it. But even before yeah. that, you find out she was like a, a literal whore. That. Yeah. So it's like, wait, you are right, doggy no chow eating whore, yeah. <laughs> right? But she, no, she, she in that regard, she just says, "Oh, I, I just did what I had to do." Okay, you know? yeah, that's stupid, but okay. sure, right? Um, we see James again a little bit later. Uh, James has his big performance, which is, I guess, like on stage at like a nightclub. Yeah, but it's like a strip joint, really. Is but it for some? Yeah, well, because the next thing that comes up after him, I think, is strippers. Oh, that's right. So you know? he does this like, tr I guess, kind of semi-artistic. Right, and that's the thing. Like, why the fuck are you performing this like, like artsy dance review? At what is clearly a sleazy clip strip joint? I and don't want to see this shit. For it. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> booing him. 
Like, this audience does not... It's like, you may as well have brought them a slideshow on Van Gogh paintings. Like, that audience does not want to see that. It's not what they showed up for. No, they boo him off stage, basically. And it sucks. It does suck. It he does. Was, like, it's horrible. Dancing on chairs. I, I don't know what the fuck he's doing up there with this stupid fucking suspenders. <laughs> <laughs> fucking James. Oh, this is a... Every time we see James, we get a great line. <laughs> he's talking to Nomi, and I think the other girl was there that he was... Penny. Pre- yeah. And he says, go get me a beer, bitch. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like, what are you picking on her for? Great line. The like, fuck, what? man. Were we good? We were great. She dances like a truck. I do not. Do you want something to drink? Yeah, get me a beer, bitch. <laughs> but I, I want to ask, ask this question to both of you, because this is, this is the end of James in the movie. We don't see him again after this, after no me and him partways in the club. So... Consider for a moment this. What was the point of his character having been in this movie to begin with? Like, at all. At all. Seriously. <laughs> what was he there for? He, he contributed just... nothing. He doesn't help Nomi's arc. He, 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 he comes and goes. He's a sleazebag. He's a sleazebag. <laughs> There's a chunk of the movie where he's not even there. Like, they, he and Nomi don't actually ever do anything together other than the one two-minute scene where they dance and then almost have sex. Almost, like, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, he, his character could have been completely non-existent. They could, they could have gone through editing, removing every scene he was in, and no one would have noticed. He didn't teach like, her anything. Yeah, she learned nothing from him. They didn't do a show together. Yeah, like he must have been friends with the director or something. <laughs> <laughs> this is Paul Verhoeven's oldest friend. Right? Just making a role for him. All right, you can be this guy, James. So they do. They get shot in the mall in T two. Oh, James just, Cameron. Just, he happened to be friend. Yeah, he yeah. just happened to be a friend of James Cameron's. So, Who? <laughs> the the Asian dude that gets shot in the hallway at the Galleria when the Terminator and the T one thousand meet to try I to get drunk. So bad for that guy. Yeah. That dude. I don't know if Cameron intended to have that character appear in any case but the dude who played him was is just a friend of james cameron's he says it like in the commentary yeah if you listen to the commentary for t2 there's a moment where james mentions it's like that's i don't remember his actual name is but it's like that's so and so he's just a buddy of mine like from japan <laughs> and he came out and he did the scene and then that was that was it and it's like oh okay back to japan you go right yeah back, you go back and see you later and like he says his name too but like they're actually like yeah friends. he's like oh that's jeff or whatever his name <laughs> happens to be i mean you know <laughs> They're actually friends. He's yeah. Like, oh, just like, movie. Hey, you're not supposed to be back here. Right, exactly. But I mean, that didn't go through the rest of his life telling people he was in T2. <laughs> if he wasn't married already at that point, he could go to bars in Tokyo and tell chicks, like, yeah, I'm in Terminator 2. Yeah. Yeah. I know James Cameron. I know somehow. James Cameron. I'm such close friends with James Cameron. Uh, JC? Put me in yeah, we go way back. Yeah, yeah. I was in Terminator 2. No <laughs> big deal. I was drinking a soda. You know. Can I buy you a drink? <laughs> like, I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to make love to the hand that shook Arnold Schwarzenegger's hand? <laughs> oh, no good. So, yeah, maybe James knew the director, but I think it was just a bad movie. And right. I don't know how. You're right. He, he should have just been cut out and nothing would have mattered. Yeah, I mean, this movie's like, what, two hours and 10, two hours and 15 minutes long, and there was no real reason for it to be. I mean, mm-hmm. it could have been an hour and 45 minutes. That would have been long enough. They could have just trimmed James out. No one would have given a shit. No. No. And again, I, I can't even think of anything. Like I said, he, she doesn't learn anything. She never yeah. quotes him again. Right. Maybe. She never... He's not nothing. important to driving the story forward. <laughs> Literally, there's no contextual or story-driven reason for that character to be there, in which case, trim them. You know, maybe like, they really wanted to have that line. Man, everybody got AIDS and shit. Because <laughs> it was so fucking funny when they were looking at the dailies that they had to keep all that in. <laughs> Just thus, to support him being there. Thus, we have the two-hour and 15-minute movie we have. They also have get me a beer, bitch. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this guy's gold. Keep him. <laughs> they could have condensed those two lines in like one conversation between him and Nomi in the middle of the movie, and we never, we never could have seen him again. Well, You're the best dancer scum, I've right? ever seen. Get me a beer, bitch. Everybody got AIDS and shit. <laughs> he walks off screen. That's it. Director's you got the cut. most natural talent of anyone I've ever seen. <laughs> get me a beer. <laughs> but you got to get with me because, you know, everyone got AIDS and shit. Now get me a beer, bitch. <laughs> See you in the sequel. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's really the best part. He, this character was not at all necessary to the film he was in, and then he becomes the centerpiece of the sequel. The stupidest thing is how, like, that almost even kind of, like, works. <laughs> like, just making all his right. jokes into one, like, that's so dumb it almost works. Right. <laughs> like, if the better option would have been con- to condense him into a single five minutes, like, it really says something. <laughs> Why is this character in this movie? 
<laughs> well, you had mentioned about um, how Crystal got Nomi take like wanted her to not be the understudy part or whatever. Right. Well, a little bit after that, uh, they have a big dance on stage, and as they're leaving, they're like walking downstairs, and Nomi basically pushes Crystal down a flight of stairs. Mm-hmm. That's how she takes her spot. But the other chick that injured the first other dancer sees Nomi do it. Yeah, and she defends her. She says she didn't do it. Yeah, so they both saw each other do something. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but she pushes her, and what happens like her? it's her knee again, too, or... Yeah, some shit. She's whatever. She, she's out, and again, she falls once. Admittedly, I guess down the stairs is a little more crazy, but... Yeah. She's like, her career's over. She, she's she tumbles pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah, but... Okay. She has a good tumble, you know? Yeah. Anyway, Naomi's... A, Naomi. That, that's a real name. No, it's right. Nomi. Nomi. Nomi's the star now. So now Nomi's the uh, the lead role so, in um, Goddess? Yes. I keep wanting to call it Volcano. <laughs> I mean, it's basically a volcano. It's basically, I mean, you could call the show sexual innuendo. Sexual, it's the same uh, thing. Not to be uh, confused with the movie Volcano with Tommy, Tommy Lee, Lee Jones, Jones which yeah. hopefully we'll be getting to at some <laughs> point. Because, boy, that one's one of my favorites. You got to have a streak of disaster movies. Well, disaster month. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. It'd be great. We do that in Dante's Peak and Armageddon and uh, Deep, uh, Impact. Deep Impact. Yeah. Disaster December. Anyone? Ooh, oh. you know, I like that. The, the December to disaster. <laughs> <laughs> so Naomi, fuck. Naomi <laughs> is the star now. Yeah. All right. So she did it. She made it to the top. She made it, which it's basically like it mirrors, you know, what Crystal was. Yeah. Where like the guy that owns the the casino or whatever is saying like this is our big star this is our big attraction and you know kyle mclaughlin's now with her and whatever we could have brought anyone into this show janet jackson paula abdul no me malone is what las vegas is all about she's dazzling she's exciting and very very sexy thank you zach miss malone how did you feel about the show tonight I just hope that I can be as good as the show. You are, my dear. You are the show. (laughs) Now, that thought real quick, which again makes very little sense for the movie, is that there's plenty of hot women. Like, they're banking all their things on this one star. Not even that it's Nomi or Crystal, just one woman. You know, like, they don't have... She's got more talent than I've ever seen, Alan. (laughs) (laughs) And have you seen so her many, dance? And they always have to focus on she may be all pelvic thrust, but she's got the talent. It, that was stupid. she's got a fire in her eye. One honest assessment to this woman in the entire film. <laughs> so there's going to be this big party to celebrate, and remember Nomi's roommate Molly. Oh yeah, who's actually like a pretty decent person. Um, Nomi insists that Molly go to this party. Right. Which oh yeah. Molly reluctantly agrees, and. There's this thing with this like rock star. I assume he's a rock star, and he's at the party. And Molly's like obsessed with his music. I guess. What was yeah. the guy's name? Andrew something. It seems Carver. Like, yeah, I think that's right. I think it was like Carver. It seems like he'd be like a like a Michael Bublé. Like he guys got a piano on stage. He's like a crooner. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. He like he's often seen like with his like long hair flowing shirtless with like a long necklace like yeah. you know that kind of looks like Jason Momoa <laughs> yeah he's like the poor man's Jason Momoa yeah. <laughs> poor man's Aquaman <laughs> so this uh, alright so let's talk about this party so <laughs> oh, brutal I know so Molly starts hanging out with this guy and they have drinks and they kind of like go upstairs and like Molly's happy because she's gonna get to sleep with this huge rock star she likes but it doesn't exactly go the way she wants. I don't know what, how much detail I want to go in on this. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> there's basically a rape scene where yeah. they end up like locking the door and quickly she's like, what's going on? It's and a then gang rape it's scene. It's a gang rape scene. So like they all overpower this one woman. And yeah, it's, it's very uncomfortable. It's very terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's weird. It, it's not, it's not, not good, good to watch. <laughs> It's awful. They in like every beat way. the shit out of her too. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really as intense as they could have gotten away with making it. Yeah, she she goes back downstairs to the party where she's just like completely like beat up and fucked up, and just like collapses in the middle of the party and is taken to the hospital. No cops are called. There's never like a, a court case or anything. And that's that ends up being the dividing line for Nomi. Yes, is the realization that law enforcement's not even going to be told that it happened. 
she tries to call the cops and then Zach tells her no and that like oh we'll get her some money but it's not happening he's like too big of a star like he's above the law right <laughs> yeah yeah well Nomi decides it's time to put on the karate suit and go out for vengeance man it turns out Naomi fuck Nomi <laughs> is a kung fu master right yeah so she puts on her sexiest gear and she goes over to this guy's place and she's like acting like she's gonna sleep with him I don't know what the fuck this guy is thinking. Like, he saw them together. Nomi introduced Molly to this guy. He must right. know that this is Nomi's friend and that she's not going to be happy about. But what he happened. did hit on her before going with with uh, Holly. That's true. So That's true. I think his assumption was this chick doesn't care that I did this thing to her friend. She's still down. Which is a weird thing to assume. Well, yeah, but I guess maybe in this universe it's not that weird. The, the, <laughs> right. the rules don't apply in the in the showgirls universe. Right. I think everybody's right. a scumbag. <laughs> like you know that me and three other guys like beat up and raped a friend of yours, and you, you now you're you're coming to my hotel room by yourself. Yeah, this yeah. is gonna go cool, right? Like right. nothing bad's gonna happen, <laughs> right? This is a totally normal visit. So Nomi basically Bruce Lee's the fuck out of this guy and kicks the shit out of him. I remember it being different from when the first time I watched it. I remember her killing him, but that's actually not what happened. She just kicks the shit out of him. Right? She right. pulls the knife on him first, like, and it's the same way she did it in the beginning. With her little switch she has blade. like a little switch blade. Yeah. she's like a badass. Isn't it a butterfly knife? I think it's like a no, stiletto it's a switch blade. Stiletto. Yeah, it's like a oh, interesting little pointy. But yeah, she pulls out her knife just like when she did with the hitchhiker or the the truck driver. Yeah, and then yeah, she kicks the shit out of him. They show a lot of funny scenes where like she's like spinning, she kicks him with her high heeled boots and she's like apparently a karate master. <laughs> so she gives him some good kicks. It doesn't look that bad actually. Maybe that's actually what she studied. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Taibo. Anyway, so she does that whole thing, then it's kind of wrapping up here. So she goes and visits Crystal in the hospital. Crystal never ratted her out for pushing her down the stairs for some reason. Crystal, I guess, accepts that this is a cutthroat vegas showgirls dancing world and that's sometimes what you got to do to get to the top i think it's implied that crystal has done this before too yeah yeah Yeah. absolutely that she at least similarly sleazily got herself to the top so so she's like passing the torch or she's like okay you know this is the order of things (laughs) (laughs) it's like uh the sith always killing the master you know (laughs) the apprentice kills the master every time (laughs) she's like she's accepted how this works and she crystal or uh, Nomi knows too now, so she like lets her go with it. They actually literally do kiss and make up. So right. for oh, the yeah. first time, they have a scene where Nomi doesn't storm out. Every <laughs> other scene between them is they interact. It gets flirty. It gets sexy. Nomi gets mad and storms out. Right. Yeah, I mean everything is really either sexy time or angry time. There's no other emotions. <laughs> yeah, seriously, it's mostly angry time. Right. She's just angry. <laughs> And then she does visit Holly in the hospital as well for a moment. I oh, think okay. She, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. That's when Kyle McLaughlin says, like, well, we're going to pay her off or whatever. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah, that's right. Those two went together. Yeah. So. Well, at this point, I guess Nomi has had enough of this life, you know? She made it to the top. She accomplished her dreams, and it's time to hitch the fuck out of Vegas. So she does. <laughs> that's it, right? She's like, she just leaves. She's like, I'm done. It's like, but it's weird that she went from I'm willing to push this other chick down the stairs to I'm finished with this in like three days. It's a very quick turnaround. Yeah. Well, no, because uh, her friend got raped. Because of the rape, yeah. yeah. The rape. She's like, I, I think it's, I, it just seemed inconsistent with the character. Yeah. To me, for that to be like, I, I, I think, I, I think maybe she would have gone and beaten the guy up the way she did. But I don't think she would have left afterward. I, yeah. I don't think she would have associated that with what she's doing. So, yeah. I don't know. I know. It seems like she's, like, she gets to the top and she, you know, her vision's kind of, like, clouded. Like, you know, now I will do whatever it takes to hold on to this position. Right. But I guess not. Yeah. Suddenly, <laughs> she decides to leave and she encounters the same guy that picked her up the first time. The Elvis impersonator. Yeah. The same guy who's going to Vegas... Gives her a ride there, and then after all that shit happens in an unspecified time, but you can assume it's months because the first cut says six weeks later, so you can assume it's at least a couple of months. That same guy is now conveniently leaving the same time she decides she's done with everything. Like they both right. 
like sync up while we we're both leaving Vegas again at the same time. What oh, the fuck was he doing there the whole time? <laughs> He's been stalking her, I think. Right. You ready to leave now? How oh. convenient. We're both ready to leave. Him and James are in cahoots, I say. <laughs> James is pretty much a stalker the whole time. He just like shows up at her work, like when she has different jobs. Even he he finds her a lot. You when know? she gets yeah. out of jail, <laughs> pre internet stalker, <laughs> pre pre MySpace. Even this isn't just pre Facebook. This is pre MySpace. Oh God. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, they leave Vegas, and it pretty much wraps up there. I believe this. You see a sign directing toward Los Angeles on the highway. When oh, they were, she's going to go be a star. Right, exactly. LA. And for a little while, I was convinced, you know, they're going to try to make a second one where she's like, now she's in L.A. Like, what would it be called? So Showgirls is this one. Right? Showgirls 2, Know Me in L.A. Sunset something Boulevard. Lazy. Yeah, <laughs> Sunset Boulevard. You know, a boulevard of broken dreams. <laughs> oh, I thought it was just going to be like actors. Anywhere else, right. This one's Showgirls, and next one's actors. Right. Showgirls 2, Hollywood. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so Showgirls is a long and angry and bad <laughs> pseudo sexual movie that is I don't know how to describe this. It's completely ridiculous. Like the acting is so hokey and bad and yet there's all these like brilliantly funny lines scattered throughout. It's almost like how like the room has that same quality, yeah. you know? Like it's made with much better uh care than the room by a better filmmaker who has proven himself before this. Right. But this is what we got with Showgirls. I don't know. <laughs> Alan, on any rating skill you want, what is your rating of the movie Showgirls? I'll give it one out of ten Showgirls. <laughs> <laughs> I would give it a half if I could. The only reason being what you pretty much touched on was that there are some funny lines and it's so bad. It's it, it's so bad, I wouldn't even say it's good. It's basically just the funny lines. That's the only joy I found in this is the random lines that made no sense because it was long it wasn't interesting it was boring none of it made sense the rape scene was terrible <laughs> and it was elizabeth berkeley her acting from the beginning her character was so off-putting the way she was pouty like we just went over and i just couldn't get into it one out of ten terrible i hated it and the nudity got boring it was just no point to that like you said it wasn't sexy it was just dumb it was like they're just being naked just to be naked like, like there's breasts <laughs> like they it was dumb one out of ten what do you think steve i will also rate on the basis of showgirls because i like that but i'm actually going to give the film i'm going to give this film a, a, a five out of ten showgirls all, almost all of the characters are completely unlikable most of the acting is awful the story's ridiculous. The dancing is terrible. The sex is unrealistic and awkward. The rape scene's one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever seen on film, and it's not even the only scene at that level of awkwardness in the movie. It's too long. Some of the characters are entirely unnecessary. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about it, the movie that's, that, that is positive, and yet at the same time, it is so campy and stupid. It is such a train wreck of an attempt to do something on film and it, like i i just i can't i can't personally say that i don't think it has any entertainment value i think it's actually got a lot of entertainment value on the basis of just just watching it be as bad as it is and that's why i'm going to give it a five high praise from steve right. steve's favorite movie of all time <laughs> oh clearly <laughs> i'm going to give this one a uh Two out of five pelvic thrusts. <laughs> nice. I think it's 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 not completely irredeemable. It is really bad. It's objectively yes. bad. Um, but there's some funny lines in there, and the acting is bad to the point where it's kind of funny. Exactly. I, I'd only give it points for being so bad that it's kind of good. Exactly. I don't think people should watch it, though, at the same time. Like, <laughs> oh, I see, and I think it has to be on unnecessary viewing list. Anyone who's never seen it once should see it once. You might absolutely hate it and never want to go back to it, but that's, that's exactly the kind of reaction you should have. Especially like, nowadays, dude, with all like uh, the political correctness. and. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Dude, that would, that's an intense movie. Right? Like, you got to keep the door open to make an occasional really repulsive film. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Well, I think we're ready for the hat. I think we've said all we had to say about Showgirls. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm done. I'm up to my fucking ears and showgirls. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> oh, I don't want to hear anything else. All right. Who's who's drawing from that this week? Uh, why don't you hand it off to Alan? Corey is. Oh, no. Okay. You want me yeah. to do it? Okay. Here we go. Oh, boy. It better not be another Power Rangers movie. Uh, I'm hoping for a kid's movie. Showgirls has really <laughs> put me in the mood for another kid's movie. Okay. Are you guys ready for... Oh. <laughs> okay. Steve wins again. Oh, my God. Yes. Hackers? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God! I'm so excited. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's great news. Two in a row for Steve. How oh, does but this you guys, this one's way lighter. Mm-hmm. Seriously, it's way lighter. You'll you'll really. I mean, this it's one's hilarious. Like just like big dumb. It'll be funny. Yeah, this is really yeah. a big dumb movie. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you guys, I, seriously, you'll enjoy yourselves. You're gonna hate it, but you're gonna enjoy yourselves. Okay. <laughs> nice. I hope that's true, Steve. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. After Showgirls. How do you guys get the lucky draws? I don't understand. <laughs> I put like 10 other picks in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, thank you guys for listening to Big Dumb Movie this week. If you want to email in, our email address is bigdumbmovie at gmail.com. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Man, everybody got AIDS and shit.